Number four, show by suitable net ionic equations that each of the following species can act as a bronsted Lowry acid, and then we have letter D. So in this case, we have to figure out how to write a net ionic equation for CH3, CH2, C, O, O, H, uh, as a bronsted Lowry acid. Now, Bronsted and Lowry were two scientists that came up with the same idea independently uh, about, you know, acids and bases. And basically, they found out that acids always donate a proton, or a proton is also known as H+, but we can also call this hydronium. We will be getting a lot more in-depth with hydronium later in the chapter, so we'll keep that in mind. But now all we just have to show is, you know, what the net ionic equation is. Now, an acid turning into its conjugate base, conjugate just means it's on the product side, basically. But an acid turning into its base does two things. One, it's got to lose one H because it's donating an H. So if you donate something, you lose it, right? And then because of that, it's always going to be a minus one charge from the original acid. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So we got to start off with this compound, CH3, CH2, C, O, O, H. And since we're stating that this is an acid, it's going to be an aqueous solution, right? It's going to be in a water solution. Aqueous just means in water, right? And since this is not one of our six strong acids, it's going to be in equilibrium. So I need to see those double arrows. And now, since it's going to donate a hydrogen, it's going to lose one. So you're always going to see an H plus on the product side if you're starting with an acid. Now we just got to figure out what is the remainder? What is that conjugate base? Well, we have to first figure out which one of these hydrogens is the acidic hydrogen, right? Am I going to lose one hydrogen from this three? Am I going to lose a hydrogen from this two? Or am I going to lose the hydrogen from this, you know, lonely H over here? Now, the rule of thumb that we have to know is that the acidic H is always the one that's bound to the more electronegative element. So if I just quickly draw a beautiful periodic table, right? And I just throw it down here. And I say that this is electronegativity. We have to know the trend of electronegativity. And as I go from left to right, electronegativity increases. And as I go from top to bottom, it decreases. So it seems that I have two options here. These hydrogens, both the threes and the twos, those are located next to a carbon. This hydrogen is located next to an oxygen. So if I look on my periodic table, carbon is roughly right around here, and oxygen is over here, right? Oxygen is more electronegative because as you go from left to right, you increase your electronegativity. The acidic hydrogen is always the more electronegative, is bound to the more electronegative element, we'll say. So I'll just put that. So since this hydrogen is bound to the more electronegative element, this is the hydrogen that is going to be getting lost or donated. So I can just kind of erase this, and I know that all these other hydrogens are going to be kept put. This one is the one that gets lost. So I'm going to just rewrite everything except for that last hydrogen on the end, CH3, CH2, COO. And once again, since this is a, a conjugate base, it's aqueous, but now we just have to uh, get the charge. Remember, you're always going to minus one from the total charge. I didn't see a charge in the upper right-hand corner. That means that it was zero. So zero minus one. Zero minus one is a negative. And then the total charges match on both sides. Negative one plus one is zero. And then this whole side is zero. So we're done. Look at that, guys. This is your net ionic equation. All right. 
And that's it. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments and let me actually do a plus here. There we go. It's those two as together. And now we're done. <laughs> so thank you so much for viewing the video. Let me know how it goes in the comments and I will see you all in later lessons. Bye-bye.